Okay. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Female Athlete Triad Awareness Q&A. Today I've got two very special guests. I'm joined by my good friend Rachel Anderson, who's GB swimmer and love swimming at the moment. And we're also joined by three-time silver medalist in Commonwealth 2014, uh, Lauren Quigley. Welcome Lauren, uh, how are you? I'm great, thank you. All the better for um, being here talking to you guys, two, two legends in the sport themselves. So yeah, <laughs> lovely, to, lovely to be chatting to you. Yeah, so today we're going to be answering your questions on menstrual cycles, mental health, stress and body image. So the first question I've got for you is, did you have any problems with your menstrual cycle when you were an athlete? Yeah, I mean, I lost mine when, I think it must have been 2014, maybe the end of 2014, um, and I lost it for a few years, um, and I thought it was brilliant at the time, because I was yeah. like, great, don't have to deal with it, um, yeah. as a swimmer, we all know that it can be a bit of a problem and a bit of a pain sometimes, especially in a swimming costume every day, you know, twice yeah. a day, you're in and out of the pool can get uncomfortable people can get nervous about it and so to not have to worry about it it was like oh fine yeah. no problem so I didn't yeah. do anything about it I just sort of left it and then um much later years later I was having a conversation with one of my coaches at the time and he was saying that he'd just done a been on a coaching conference and that how important it was someone had spoken about how important your menstrual cycle is to not just performance but your health and your health later on in life you know throughout um once you finished sport so we then had to have a, a major focus about how we get that back what we needed to do um and i think there's a few factors towards me losing it um and that's the thing it's such an individual thing for every single athlete that yeah, for me i think it was about figuring out why i'd lost it and how we were going to get it back uh, and how not only were we going to get it back, but we were going to keep it, um, you know, just yeah. for, like I said, health reasons, way beyond sport itself. Um, so it is actually quite a damaging thing that I learned. But, um, yeah, I got them back. So we're all good. We're all healthy yeah. again. Was, was that something you were quite open with your coach about? Or did you struggle to talk to, if you, did you have a male coach as well? Was that harder? Yeah, I always had male coaches. Uh, I don't think I, I didn't have a female coach at all. And for me, I didn't ever mention it to anyone. Um, I think, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it to my mum maybe now and again, but nothing major. Because again, I was sort of like problem solved, don't have to worry about it, haven't got a uh, great, let's just carry on and crack on. And so by the time that it was time I needed to really sort it out, I was thinking, right, why have I still not got them? I was that bit older. And so talking about things, I mean, Rachel knows, me and Rachel worked together on a camp not too long ago. And Rachel knows I will just talk pretty much about anything, quite open about it. And so for me, talking to my coach, it was no problem at that point. I was at the age where I was like, yeah, I've not got um, this, this yeah. and this, maybe too open sometimes. Um, <laughs> but I can see why it's difficult for swimmers to have the conversation with their coach. Yeah. What would you say to someone who is struggling to open up to their coach? Is there any advice you'd give to them? Yeah, definitely. I think it's important to talk to someone about it. It doesn't have to be a coach because if you approach parents or the friends or the coaching staff, um, you've got to find who you can open up to. And then information can then be relayed to your coach if it needs you know if needs be really yeah. so it doesn't always have to be a direct dialogue with your coach if you'd much rather go through someone else but I would say it's so important to tell someone and to start the process of getting them back because they really are it's such a vital part of being an athlete and being a healthy athlete yeah that's good um as well because we're all swimmers you mentioned earlier with um it, can be like uncomfortable swimming on your period and stuff i've got one question um what would you recommend to a swimmer when they're on their period and they're worried about getting into the water getting into the water yeah so if they i think what they meant is well perhaps they were worried about um like leaks or getting out of the water and all yeah. that stuff that we probably yeah, yeah, yeah. About as well look it's all 
part and parcel of being a swimmer unfortunately yeah. and you know my friends at school used to say what do you mean you still swim even when you're on your period and yeah. I go well you know what we're just tough or swimmers you know yeah. um but they couldn't get their head around it and, it and it is something that especially when you're just starting to go what am yeah. I supposed to do do I take time off swimming or what and it's about finding out what you're most comfortable with um and you know just you've got to take your time with it as well it can't be a rush and again everyone starts at such different ages I was quite lucky because I started late and then lost them anyway but I started quite late um but I've got friends that started really young and so for someone who's really young and swimming it's like am I allowed to swim you know there's so many questions that that go through your mind but it's about what works for you what you feel most comfortable with and also sometimes things go wrong um, you yeah. get it wrong or you might get a leak or something like that um, yeah. and although it's it can feel like the worst thing in the world it's actually just really normal and I think probably most female swimmers have had a moment of panic or yeah. a moment of like I can't believe that just happened but actually it's just your body's way of saying you're healthy you know it's that time of the yeah. month and you've just yeah. got to again find what works for you rather than um, well they do that so I'll do that or you know it's just about a process of not being too critical on yourself and, and worrying too much yeah. you want to add something well yeah I just think with um leaking and stuff I think it's get, becoming more normalized now in swimming um like everyone knows even like guys on my swim team like they know about periods you know girls do leak I've come across it and yeah it's just normal so yeah it is it is, it is about education like like you say yeah. guys know more about it now so it's yeah. it's not so much of a oh what's going on there that's weird it's more yeah. like a, oh okay you know yeah. it's I know what that is um and it's sort of like a approached in a, in a more I'd say gentle way yeah yeah 100 um moving on from the menstrual cycle we've got a question about um body image so how do you deal with comparing yourself to the perfect body on social media well first of all i've got the perfect body so it's it's quite <laughs> easy to be honest no i'm kidding i'm kidding yeah. um it's it can get really difficult it can get really difficult and unfortunately in elite sport or in swimming that i can talk for we are constantly almost half naked you know we're in a swimsuit that reveals everything almost and so it can get really difficult because if you're always on show like that you know you have to be brave to do a sport like that and to walk out in front of a crowd of people um half naked so it can get difficult and obviously you have your pictures and you know I have pictures on my phone that I go through nowadays and I think at the time I would never have posted them because I thought that I was too big or my shoulders were too big or whatever the case might be and now I look at them and I think gosh I wish I was in that shape now you know it's crazy (laughs) to look back and it's it's difficult at times I'm not going to say it's not you know there were times when I really struggled but I think it's that thing of um, putting things into perspective so if you look round poolside everybody is a different shape and you look at a lineup at the olympics or you look at the best in the world or even in in your event or just in general everyone that's behind the blocks looks completely different um you have i mean in great britain we have anna hopkin who's a lot smaller than freya anderson doing the same event you know they're both absolutely phenomenal swimmers and they look completely different so it's it's really difficult to not compare yourself you know I've done it before we've all done it before on poolside with our teammates and you think gosh they look great you know or wish I had shoulders like that or whatever that the case might be but in actual fact perspective reality we are all built different that's what makes us unique special whatever you want to call it and it doesn't take anything away from you uh, because they're probably looking at you going I wish I had that that and that so it's yeah. it's about perspective it's about grounding yourself it's about when you're going into that place taking yourself out of it and going actually let's be realistic here um yeah. having good people around you that's always a good one um but again you know I'm not sat here saying I'm a saint I'm really not and I had really bad times with it so you know it's 
it's just about learning growing checking yourself now and again making sure you're not going down that rabbit hole of unrealisticness yeah. to be honest yeah so how think, about you girls do you struggle with that at all um yeah like always after after summer obviously putting on weight is i always find that difficult but i always try and remember that essentially my body is making me perform the way I am yeah. and I think that's really important for athletes if you can if I compare myself to a normal person like I've got bigger legs bigger shoulders all of that but then I'm in elite sport you know achieving the stuff I'm achieving and that's because the way my body's built how I'm training how I'm fueling myself so I think that's really important to, as an athlete remind yourself that your body is helping you swim the way yeah. you swim. I think, like, I just add as well with the the way that question's been asked, like the perfect body. I don't, I don't think there's any like no. that's not there's not a perfect. I've already body. said it's mine. Okay, girls, it's my body. It's body. <laughs> <laughs> Far from it. Far from it. But you're right. There isn't a perfect. What is the perfect body? Yeah, exactly. And I wouldn't, I'd say I don't think I struggled with like comparing myself to other people. It was just always like looking at myself and thinking like I need to be, I thought I had to be a specific. It didn't, I didn't bother me like what other people looked like. It was just always criticizing myself. And I think when you do that, you put so much pressure on yourself and then you don't, you don't enjoy what you do. So yeah, I just like emphasize that you. You don't, you don't need to look any specific way and it once you start listening to your body and listening to like hunger cues and stuff instead of trying to achieve a body type then you start enjoying it more and like performing better just because you're listening to yourself rather than listening to everything else around you and so, so exactly yeah. and look girls we could all do the same training the same eat the same uh, yeah. do exactly the same and we would all look completely different so it is just again yeah. so individual and it's just about am I doing the right thing am I training hard am I feeling right um am I enjoying it well you know what else matters really um yeah. I can yeah they look skinnier than me but I'm loving what I'm doing and yeah. I'm working hard yeah. at it so yeah um the next question is about stress and what your what is your personal best ways of coping with stress hmm good question um i think stress is a really tough one because stress again i know i say it a lot but i really mean it all these things are really individual so stress for me um might look completely differently to stress for rachel stress you know it's it's yeah. completely different but for me it was it's always the people around me so if I'm getting stressed um I always look to the the closer people around me family friends um yeah. a bit of perspective again just people to ground you um you know I'm stressed about this and and just for people to go well that's great and all but you know look at this this and this and how can we yeah. manage that stress and um again I'm not I'm no saying you know I, for a lot of times in my career stress got me really got me um and it would there was no coping of it. it it wasn't coping it was more of a survival mode zombie mode right okay this is this is happening but i've just got to keep going and keep going and keep going and it's got to all just be focused on swimming and that's it um yeah. and that's what, i think that's part of the reason that caused my lack of um or losing my periods um i think it was part of um the decline in mental health when it got to races and you know mentally not being in the right place and stress for me always came out of my stomach so I'd be literally in excruciating pain even after a race um I remember just trying to get through Sheffield bent over um just in so much pain like couldn't walk properly uh, it's interesting it's an interesting question and it's sort of part of why I'm doing what I'm doing sort of I want to take that role of alleviating stress for people as well in a way um, and just have, having someone to talk to I mean talking to people always helped me although I didn't reach out enough for it when I did it was like a an absolute key uh, and a magic sort of a piece of magic for me so how yeah, about you just, guys what do you yes. do 
I think it's amazing like how much friends can help as well like we've known I've each other. I've not got any friends so <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys do to alleviate the stress or help with stressful times? Um, I quite like I enjoy reading so whenever I pick up a, a book I'm yeah. like instantly I feel I don't know because you're in a different kind of world than you <laughs> when you read so I think it's not taking my mind off what's stressing me, but kind of um, reminding myself that there's a world outside of what is stressing me and like a world outside of, if, if I'm stressed over a session or whatever, I have to remind myself of the bigger picture and that it's a long journey. It's not just something that's gonna happen overnight. And yeah, um, yeah just family, we talk to each other, don't we, Esther? So, yeah. yeah. What about you, Reg? <laughs> well, this obviously came from you but you, um because we spoke about it leaving swimming at the pool um because that's often what stress is created in my life from the pool so really trying to like leave the session everything behind and then when i walk out i'm a i've got other things you know i'm a i have stuff outside of swimming i have friends family i have my um degree you know, go for coffee, all of that. I live a normal life as well. Swimming's just something that I do. Um, yeah. So I think that's really important to remember. Absolutely. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I think you did a really good post on that the other day. If, if you guys watching want to check that out as well on Quigley Sport. <laughs> yeah. Please, double tap. You know, just yeah. give me all this ego boost. <laughs> <laughs> it's important though, it is, and it's something that you know I talk. Again, I say it so much. I could talk as if I'm a saint, you know, or you should leave something at the pool. Yeah. And I was swimming, you know, I was terrible. And I would I would take uh, one, I had to say, for example, and you girls will understand, and hopefully a lot of people that are listening understand, for example, a set of 2100s, and you've got to hit 61s for every single one. And so I'd do, 20, I'd do 19, 60 points, and then I'd do one, 62, and I would take that 62 and I yeah. would carry it with me for days, you know, it was yeah. awful. And it's just so unhealthy. And it's like, I wish I'd have practiced it more of leaving stuff at the pool. And so yeah. it's great to hear you say that, Rich, because, you know, I, I say these things in the hope that the next superstars take it on. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it'll help with, with loads of things and, and everything in life. It's not just swimming, it's school, leaving it there or, you know, uni or at your job or whatever it is. It's a really great skill to have, um, but it takes work to, to be able to do it. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But I'm trying. So. It's good. I like to hear it. It's great. Um, another question similar is, um, how do you manage your emotions when they're at their worst? Quite a big, broad topic. But <laughs> Ooh, um, How do I manage my emotions? I think it's got to, it's got to be a similar answer to about stress really um and it's funny you should say when they're at their worst because emotions have labels obviously so if you're sad that's a bad emotion if you're happy that's a good emotion Mm. um if you're angry bad um but emotions are actually all pretty good and because if you did a race for example and you got out and you went pb plus seven minutes right that's an awful PB plus but seven minutes you'd get out and you'd be upset and you'd be angry and you know you'd be disappointed in yourself if you got but and that's a bad emotion but if you got out and you were happy about it then yeah you know it would be like well oh that's a great emotion well no it's not because in this situation you should be upset yeah. and down and that's what then drives you forward to um to succeed and and continue growing now on the flip side of that obviously how do you deal with bad emotions sometimes you have to you know and i get i definitely get the question um but again it's got to be similar to the answer that i said before was just like my family and my friends are such a vital part in my life in terms of managing things and stuff like that um i'm very heavily um influenced by the closest around me and if everyone around me is good and happy then i'm genuine generally pretty good myself yeah. um i'm quite good at 
and whether it's a good thing or not, if things are going bad for me, yes, it's rubbish, but as long as everyone else is okay, then I'm okay. Yeah. And I know that that probably doesn't sound the healthiest, um, but that's how it can bring me out of my mood if everyone else, else is good and they can bring me out and make me laugh or go to the cinema, never underestimate a coffee. I love a coffee and a chat. It's the best thing ever, yeah. especially if cake's involved, you know? Yeah. Um, it just has to be simple things. A Disney film, you know? Just yeah. anything like that that takes me off, like you, takes me off into a different world for a bit. Um, but also acknowledging the emotions as well and why you're feeling that way is important. So instead of going, oh, no, 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 I don't want to feel that. That's not right. I don't, oh, yeah. no, I'm not sad go okay I am sad why am I sad and how can I get out of that and do I need to sit with it for a bit before I do get out of it yeah, I hope that I makes think, sense and I feel like yeah. I just went off on a tangent really no it's like um, knowing it's normal to get upset and stuff it doesn't make you any weaker than if you're yeah. happy you know what I mean like it's part of just the journey and it's okay to not be okay all the time but, yeah, yeah definitely absolutely yeah we've actually got one last question um what was your biggest challenge mentally during your swimming career and how did you deal with it? Oh, great question. Um, my biggest challenge mentally. I think for me, it was getting to a point where I hated the sport that I'd loved all my life. So feeling numb towards it. So not making a team it was much more than just not making a team in terms of the team and making the team had sort of gone out of my mind, out of my heart, out of everything. It was just, I was numb to it. And so it was like, you know, the worst thing for me was I hated swimming and I want nothing to do with it. And, you know, I think now, my gosh, you know, and I love being in the swimming world and will always hope to be, you know, a part of it in some way, which is why I'm doing what I do now with the mentoring and the camps that, you know, me and Rachel have worked together on. Um, and I think, you know, gosh, if I'd have left at that point on someone else's terms, hating and feeling numb towards it, you know, what, where would I be now? Um, yeah. And so thankfully I got the love back and I had some great people in my life to get the love back for the sport. And it was more about enjoyment and why I do it and not finishing on anyone else's terms but my own. Yeah. I think that was the toughest, though. That moment was like, OK, I've not made a team, but actually I don't care. And I did care. But, on, you know, it was so deep that I was just like, I don't, you know, I really don't. And so, again, I, I'm glad I went through it and I'm glad I'm doing what I do now. But at the time, you know, it was awful and it was three months in my room depressed and it was a tough mm -hmm. time. So I think that, um, well, that taught me so much, taught me so yeah. much about um, trying to help the next load of people and the next load of superstars and like yourselves, really, you know, having these conversations. So um, a tough moment, um, a lot more to the story, but um, in a nutshell, probably that was the toughest time. Yeah. yeah. How about you two? Have you had any tough times at all? Well, yeah, I'd say that, that my toughest time was just when I was like dealing with disordered eating and it was like you don't realize how bad it is and until you look at back at something like that that's when it hits you how you think how how was I getting through it it's just crazy like I would I was constantly in like a mental like I don't know what the battle. word is like battle with myself like it was like being in someone's birthday party and like having like really wanting just to be able to take part but having to struggle with what my mind was telling me like the fact that a piece of cake was causing me that much fear and stuff it was just crazy and like it's so mad how your mind can control you so much yeah um and then when you get out of that way of thinking and like sometimes it still scares me and like I just when I get back into that old way of thinking I've just got to stop it as it arrives otherwise because I I just don't want to get back into that old mindset um but that was definitely a big challenge and hard to get through it as well but it feels like so good to actually say that you've come out the other side as well like 
yeah and how much that's and i'm guessing obviously that's part of why you're doing what you're doing and there's yeah, so much to that that you've gone through that that you can now yeah. help others i know there'll be people listening going and i'm in that position right now and i yeah. you know i want to get out of it yeah um, and I, I, which is why it's great yeah it's just when you've been through it yourself you just don't want anybody to be in that position like even if i just helped one person that'll i just yeah i just want to help yeah. that one person because i know how bad it can be yeah, definitely trust me i get it how about you rach um the worst probably moment was for me time was in so in 2018 i lost my dad and my uncle probably about um t three months apart they both died and um after my two weeks after my dad died i had um the trials to make the european junior team in 2018 so obviously that was very difficult because my dad died but i i was like kind of a name to make the team so i had to keep training to get try to get to the yeah. um euro juniors and i did that which was a great achievement for me um and then with that in that same year i had my gcses and um, so that was probably a really hard year for me um but obviously it was also a great year because i'd overcome so much made that junior team so i'm well with everything else in my life that was happening so yeah even though it was a like one of the worst times of my life mm -hmm. i did some great stuff in that year getting through my gcse's making my first second international team yeah. so yeah, mm -hmm. yeah oh, i'm really sorry to hear that obviously that's absolutely awful but it's it's amazing to think that you overcame that and you know that's that's a lot of people wouldn't be able to do that i'm not sure i'd have been able to do that so you know absolutely amazing and obviously you've carried on and you're doing amazing in swimming which is great yeah. to see. and <laughs> i'm looking forward to seeing you <laughs> just just fly honestly it's you know we we spoke obviously a lot on the camp and it was it's just so nice to be around the next generation and to to hear your story you know it's people say it's nice to hear mine and that i'm so open but you know you guys are doing exactly the same so doing stuff like this well we can only hope to help whoever is listening and and yeah. just keep hopefully supporting yeah. um but if you sorry this is turning into my interview now but um <laughs> if you if you could tell your younger self or you know someone who's in their swimming now just one piece of advice what would you say to them going through having gone through what you've gone through for me it was um to not put pressure on yourself because i really did that when i was younger and i think it's so important to enjoy the journey i mean obviously a, a certain amount of pressure is good when you're racing because for me like i race well under pressure but just trying to enjoy the journey like I used to carry so much weight on my shoulders of expectations and stuff and just like trusting what you're doing day in day out and training enjoying it and when you enjoy something that's when you'll you know race well because a happy swimmer is a fast swimmer yeah um, <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah yeah that's I definitely I, I'm quite similar to just say like you've got to realize that because of the struggle I had was around food and training and stuff, you've got to realise that food is going to fuel you. It's not going to do you any harm. And just to be that young and think that you're going to be affected that much by food, you've just got to tell yourself, like, stop putting so much pressure on yourself to to eat a certain way. And so just, yeah, just use it to fuel your performance rather than do your performance harm because in the end I was harming myself instead of helping myself and it's just about knowing that it's okay as well to let your hair down and <laughs> you know like enjoy it not just see it as something that's a burden almost rather than something that you want to enjoy because one day it's going to be over and you're going to think god if I would have just enjoyed it um so yeah that would <laughs> great no i love it i think both absolutely brilliant things and you know i'm always looking to learn off everyone so to listen to you speak and to give me some advice even though i finished my career um no it's good it's really interesting and it's it's great that you're doing what you're doing yeah well thank you so thank you so much for joining us it's literally been great and 
it's so nice that we can just talk about it like be brave enough to talk about it as well because I think yeah. the biggest thing that was holding me back from asking was help for help was just being scared and like embarrassed but it actually just shows some strength that you can ask for help when you're when you're struggling because that is actually stronger than yeah. staying quiet so it's so good for all of us to get together and just talk as if it's <laughs> you know as if it's normal and hopefully that's what we'll do we'll normalize the discussion and open yeah. this discussion break the silence around all these taboo topics so um no it's fantastic thanks so much for yeah. taking the time it's been so good to have your no thank, thanks for having me like i say that this is the it's nice to see a shift in swimming and within you know some of the swimmers within um great britain just to to open up about these things and and you know a lot of the things when i in my era of swimming were nothing was really talked about which is why i've done what i've done with quigley sport and and want yeah. to support everybody else who's doing something similar um and wanted to support because there's a big gap um i believe where i would love to just go in and fill it and yeah. everyone else to fill it with me and yeah. you know real make a real difference um, if we can so yeah